Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist. And apologies to Cindy fans, but she's currently at my mother's place because I was at a 60th birthday party last night. But here's one of her toys, and I should have really thought of something clever to say about it and make it work in with the video, but I didn't. But anyway, if you stick to the end, I will show you some footage of what Cindy got up to during the week. Now, if you spend any time on social media, you all have seen many examples of what has been dubbed as ghouling, which is when disgusting ghouls share news stories of young people who have died suddenly and try to suggest that the death was caused by you know what, without having any knowledge of the actual cause. In this video, we are going to go back to the science and look at a new study from Australia, which shows that there is no link between vaccination and sudden cardiac death in young people. But first, let's have a quick look at what the ghouls are saying. Here's a tweet from someone called Vance Murphy, who has a blue tick. And a blue tick means that the person pays $8 per month to Twitter to get various benefits that allow their tweets to be amplified. 35-year-old healthy, dead in her sleep. I do not know her vaccination status, but I know that healthy 35-year-olds don't die in their sleep. Hashtag until proven otherwise. So basically this person is saying that if you are not sure of someone's vaccination status, you should just assume that they were vaccinated and that that was the cause without any evidence. And then we had the blue tick died suddenly Twitter account. And these are the same people who made the infamous died suddenly movie, which Cindy and I previously made a video about. A school teacher and mother of a nine-year-old boy has hashtag died suddenly. She died in bold in her sleep at the age of 40. Cause of death equals unknown, followed by a needle emoji. Very subtle. And speaking of subtle, blue tick, Dr. C. Malhotra also uses the softly, softly approach. Just awful. Sudden cardiac death aged 46, just a year older than me. Way, way too young, followed by a broken heart emoji. And this is in relation to a story about the sad death of MasterChef Australia host Jock Zonfrillo, whose cause of death had not even been released at the time he tweeted. So his claim that it was sudden cardiac death was just a lie. And at the time I'm recording this video, his cause of death is still unknown. And Malhotra is another serial offender when it comes to disinformation. If you'd like to know more, Cindy and I have made a video about a dodgy paper that he published, which was wall-to-wall -wall disinformation. The impression these ghouls and many others like them are trying to create is that young people have never died suddenly before. And so every death that has occurred since the vaccine rollout is falsely attributed to the vaccine. Unfortunately for them, the data says otherwise. This study here was undertaken in Victoria in Australia and they looked at the incidence of out-of-hospital cardiac arrests over time. Now, Australia is a particularly good country to do this type of study because we have a very high vaccination rate and very few people got COVID prior to widespread vaccination. And the reason this is important is because we already know that there was a link between the incidence of COVID and out-of-hospital cardiac arrests early in the pandemic prior to the vaccination rollout. And we also know that if you are infected following COVID vaccination, you are at a much lower risk of subsequent major cardiovascular events than if you get COVID when you are unvaccinated. So in countries with lower vaccination rates, it's not possible to distinguish cardiac arrest from COVID with other causes if you are just looking at population level data. 
but that's not an issue in Australia. So let's have a look at what they found. The data they have collected is for what they define as young people who are people aged under 50. I personally think young is much older than that, but that's what they're calling it. In this figure, orange is sudden cardiac arrest of unknown cause. Yellow is sudden cardiac arrest caused by myocarditis. And blue is all cardiac arrest. The figure also shows COVID cases in green and COVID vaccinations in a pinky red colour. And it's important to note that the COVID cases and vaccinations are at different scales to cardiac arrests and to each other. So although it looks like they are similar towards the end of the figure, they actually aren't and vaccinations are over 10 times higher than COVID cases. The figure covers three time periods. The first period is before COVID. The second period is after COVID arrived in Australia, although, as I previously mentioned, rates were still very low compared with other countries in the world. And the final time period is after COVID vaccination was introduced in Australia. The first thing to notice in this figure is that contrary to the claims of anti-vaxxers, young people have sadly always had sudden cardiac arrest. So unfortunately, there is nothing unusual in young people dying suddenly. The second thing to notice is that since the COVID vaccines were introduced in Australia, there has been no increase in overall cardiac arrest. No increase in sudden cardiac arrest from unknown causes and no increase in cardiac arrest caused by myocarditis. In addition to looking at population level data, they also looked at sudden deaths that occurred within 30 days of vaccination and compared these with the baseline rate. And they found that there was no significant deviation from the baseline profile of causes of young sudden death. So while anti-vax schools add to the grief of families by sharing stories of their loved ones' sudden passings with false innuendos about the causes, the science clearly shows that vaccines are not increasing the rates of cardiac arrest. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that there are no deaths at all associated with vaccines in Australia. All adverse events following vaccination in Australia are investigated by the Therapeutic Goods Administration, which is known as the TGA. And in particular, any death is investigated. They put out reports regularly, and I'll just read you what the latest report says. Vaccines can lead to death in extremely rare instances. However, most deaths that occur after vaccination are not caused by the vaccine. In large populations in which a new vaccine is given, there are people with underlying diseases who may die from these diseases. When a vaccine is given in that same population, the link between the vaccine and death is usually coincidental not caused by the vaccine. These deaths are carefully reviewed to assess whether vaccines could be the cause and for the vast majority that is not the case. The TGA closely reviews all deaths reported in the days and weeks after COVID-19 vaccination. Since the beginning of the vaccine rollout to the 30th of April 2023, more than 66 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been given in Australia. The TGA has identified 14 reports where the cause of death was linked to vaccination from 985 reports received and reviewed. There have been no new vaccine-related deaths identified since 2022. The 14 deaths likely to be related to vaccination occurred in people aged 21 to 81 years old. There have been no deaths in children or adolescents determined to be linked to COVID-19 vaccination. If we identify a new death likely to be related to vaccination, we will publish this information promptly 
in a vaccine safety report as we have for all other cases since the start of the vaccine rollout. Now, every one of these deaths is tragic, as is every death caused by COVID and caused by anything else. But the anti-vax schools attempting to imply that every death that occurs is caused by the vaccine are not helping people who have generally suffered loss from vaccines because it risks them being lumped in with the fake cases and not being taken seriously when they should be. So if you see anyone falling prey to the claims of these disgusting ghouls, please share this video with them. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on this video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And, of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or Cindy a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. And now here's some footage of Cindy having fun. <laughs>